Hello everybody, I have gathered here today with a few of my classmates to discuss our UN model, uh, how we prepared, how it went down and how the entire experience went. And I'm here with Aguaya, Bobby and Ellie from the 11th grade and uh, yeah, the following podcast will be talking about the UN model. Um, hi, I'm Aglaya and um, I represent the United States in this UN model as well. I was assistant to the chairman. I am Bobby. I was uh, the chairman and I also presented South Africa. And I am Ellie and I presented France. My role at the UN model was to coordinate the preparation of all the other students as well as to represent the United Kingdom. So, <clears throat> we, we are part of the DP program and this was our CAS project. So, what exactly is a CAS project? CAS project is something that is a core subject <clears throat> in any IB school um, that um, is creativity, um, action and service. So, students are supposed to get in touch with their creativity and their active side as well as be able to um, do some charity or uh, be able to just give out certain acknowledgements to different people in their <coughs> service of action. Uh, my role at the UN model was to manage my time adequately in order to both coordinate and supervise the the progress of the other students as well as to make sure I am representing the United Kingdom and its interest in climate change which which was the topic of the of the model. Uh, However, what exactly is a UN model? The I UN model aims to influence young people to speak their minds on relevant topics such as the one of climate change. It also uh, includes, it, it provides benefits both to young, it provides benefits to young uh, people who, who want to uh, make their contribution to relevant topics. Uh, okay, so my role as a chairman was to be the leader of the whole conversation that was going on. Uh, each country needed to be uh, represented and they all needed to state their uh, presence there. Uh, also, I was, uh, I was representing a country, South Africa, and just as every other country, I had to have a, a position paper and a resolution so that we could all combine them and come up with something together. So in the role of presenting France, I had to like research what was the position of France, how it, how it is um, influenced by the climate changes and what action it takes in order to stop them or at least lower them. So <clears throat> the preparation for the actual model went down by uh, firstly, uh, uh, each student got assigned a random country, which was a part of, the, of this year's Security Council. Uh, after having assigned the country, uh, every student had to prepare a position, a position paper, which uh, aimed to state the basic development and position of each country regarding the topic of climate action and climate change. Afterwards, we had to make um, group resolutions as well as individual resolutions. Resolution is kind of stating a problem as well as giving a solution to it. So each and every country had different problems to solve and some were more willing than others. So resolutions always have to be based on documents, always have to be based on something local as well as global. The, uh, <clears throat> the UN uh, has set a few goals which uh, inspire both the, the the models and their their the process of their preparation and the, the actual models itself. Uh, we focus on the Millennium Development Goals as well as the Sustainable Development Goals 
as climate action is sustainable goal number 13 and as we all know is a relevant topic which always comes up in the news and everybody should be well informed and have a relevant opinion on it so how did we all gather information i do think that's something very individual personally as the united states i went around official sites of the united states ministries and different services and i gathered a lot of um, official um, information however i know that some other countries couldn't do that so i would like to ask how everybody did their own research so yeah we also read the un charter the paris agreement the kyoto protocol and that kind of documents to help you gain information like uh, each and every one of our countries is a part or eventually became a part of either the paris agreement <coughs> the or the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, and yeah. How For me, both as a supervisor and a representative of the UK, I had to gather information not only about the position of the United Kingdom, but also I had to gather and uh, make sure the, the students got information about the whole process of the, of the, of the model itself. Uh, regarding the UK, I visited uh, many sites stating different opinions and had to analyze different statistics in order to make sure I was understanding the position the United Kingdom was in and the goals and preferences it had on climate change and climate action with consideration for the greenhouse gas emissions the ocean pollutions and other relevant topics which we all um, which we all basically stated both in our position papers and in the discussion phase of the model okay so exactly how did this um, UN model go through um, I personally think that it went pretty well I genuinely was expecting it to go a lot worse and with the time we had to prepare it, I think we did a marvelous job. Does anybody want to add anything to that? I would agree. <clears throat> the build-up to the actual model was a little bit stressful for us because we were new to the format of the, of the, of the model. We were afraid that the discussion wouldn't go so well, that we would either end up fighting or, uh, you know, discussing different points or not having enough information to discuss. But I believe we ended up just fine by uh, taking every single point, going through it, and uh, having a, a relevant and meaningful discussion. I, as a chairman, was uh, really nervous about my role to keep the whole conversation going. Uh, in my vision, the whole thing could have gone even better, but it still went a lot better than I expected it to. Uh, the whole our the whole meeting we had, we didn't have to. The fuck? <laughs> um. So Ellie, as France, it's very important that you were present there because of the Paris Agreement. Yeah. And the Paris Agreement <coughs> is um, formed and recorded in France. So. Would you like to add something about the pressure of being France on such a global and important topic, not only for France, but also for the whole world? Yeah, I would say that France was actually probably the best country to be because it's like really supportive to all the points in the Paris Agreement and all the things that are mm, yeah mentioned there. And she, France, <laughs> really looks oh. i believe bobby was uh he was really underrated both by our teachers and our students because everybody think he every, everyone thought he would fall under the pressure of being a chairman but i believe he was a good and permanent driving force of the conversation as he uh he was aware of the procedure of all the procedures he had to remind us of and did a great job of formulating a 
good basis for our discussion in general. Yeah, I agree as well. I severely underestimated you and thought it would go a lot worse than it did. So thank you for being so present in the situation. I think it went horrible, like in my vision. I I did horrible, like not horrible, but just bad. Uh, it was stressful enough for me to be a chairman, but I also had to represent a country, represent a country. So keeping track of the whole discussion and at the same time keeping track of my my ideas and topics that I had to share with others was just, my mind was everywhere. Uh, being a permanent state, for me, it was difficult to formulate not only meaningful messages towards other countries, but also to keep track of all the topics which uh, we discussed, which included greenhouse gas emissions, ocean pollution. Uh, we also talked about energy usage, energy usage, and uh, the sea levels rising. We talked yeah. about economy as well, which green economy. Yeah, green economy which is, um, as America, was very important for me. And is, as silly as it may sound, it was quite hard for me to represent America because of their rather uh, conservative views on climate change. And I learned that while, yes, they are really conservative in that um, topic, they also really try to provide the best for their citizens. So... It's not, they're not only focused on climate change, but rather just the quality of life of people. So um, I think I learned a lot about different countries through this experience. Um, so what do you think could have gone better in general? Which, which parts of it? I think that the resolution part, <coughs> the final part, and the whole, the draft resolutions, they went well, in my opinion. But the, our final resolution could have gone better. Yes, for me, I, I would agree with Bobby because uh, being a, a UK delegate, it was uh, difficult for me to... Because the, the UK has really optimistic views regarding energy usage and uh, expansion on greenhouse gas substitutions. It was uh, kind of hard to uh, make relevant agreement with uh, the other countries as my my goals and expectations from the conference and the, the future of the United Kingdom were a lot higher. Yeah, I agree because as the United States, I constantly had to kind of stop people from being a little too optimistic about the future. And at the end, we kind of got into a little confrontation with France and the United yeah. Kingdom. So um, what was your viewpoint at that at that moment? I mean, I I was totally for um, decreasing the greenhouse gas emissions while America was like, I cannot do that. I am not prepared to do such, um, such a giant thing. changes. And in the end, we reached a compromise. No. And we all agreed on a, on the point. So at the end, I think that was the most important that we managed to reach a compromise without having to argue too much, but as well as having discussed all different aspects of this part of the resolution. So how did we exactly feel during the whole uh, during the whole procedure? So Bobby said he was very stressed. Anybody else having anything? I felt quite nervous before reading the position paper, but then <coughs> I like calmed down and was like, it will be well. And it was really well. For me, the position paper was basically because we had to prepare it prior to the actual conference. For me, it was a good starting point as I felt really secure about all the facts that I stated in my position paper, I felt I felt okay at that point of time. Later on, during the discussion at the beginning, I felt a little bit... I was prepared for the, for the conference, but I wasn't really prepared to uh, compromise with my optimistic views, and I wasn't completely uh, mentally ready to discuss with other countries. But as the discussion went on, I felt more and more comfortable and in the end it was a friendly 
me think, I guess. Yeah, and it was actually interesting to do such things. Yeah, it was... Because I expected it to be not that... Yeah. I, I expected just, like, silence. Like... Uh, on sections like 30 seconds of silence and no one says anything just because i don't yeah, know what too. to say i um, yeah i genuinely thought there would be such silences however i'm really glad there was there wasn't any and that we were able to fill everything up to the brim with different thoughts different opinions um i was quite nervous in the beginning before even the the wow. position paper because of there was there was people in the room that were watching us yeah and i got super anxious However, after um, I read my position paper, <laughs> after a minor inconvenience, <laughs> um, I felt a lot more confident. However, every time we spoke, I would I could still hear my heart beating in my ears. It was it was a very stressful but rewarding experience. My hands were shaking while I was reading my position paper. Yeah, yeah the, and my <laughs> voice was shaking. The, out. the guests <laughs> were a little bit of an intimidation factor, but. Uh, Having them in the room only, I guess, half, half the period of time was like, it, it made, a, it, it grounded us basically, it got us back to reality, it made us realize the importance of our meeting, it made us basically realize why it was so important to actually prepare and uh, discuss on such a relevant topic. Um. So... Personally, I would recommend that for a person to do it at least once. At least once, yeah. At least once. Maybe not. Maybe as a chairman, you would have a different opinion. You would be like, never again. It was too interesting for me. I, I would still recommend, it. but not. But don't be a chairman <coughs> and represent the country at the same time. Yeah, and uh, students shouldn't be naive going into this, thinking that it doesn't require. Uh, it doesn't require quite a bit of preparation and research in order to both uh, be aware of the procedures that a UN model implies, but also, as, as Bobby said, being a chairman is a responsibility, and if someone isn't ready to take that responsibility, they probably shouldn't build up false expectations. Um, I would like to add that not only do you research before the, the UN model, but even during the UN model, because sometimes somebody just says something and you and you need to react at yeah. them somehow and you really need to just research that topic and you sometimes you're not even sure that the, the information is really accurate you just gotta say it because that what it's that's what it says in the internet so um, there were certainly times that I felt really unprepared and uh, I felt like I was talking while I didn't really know what I was saying I would actually to uh, back up Aglaya and uh, recommend the, the UN model for students who are interested in, I guess, international relations, because it, it's a, first of all, it's a good way to practice your language skills, that's for certain, because uh, you have to prepare a something in written form, then you have to basically prepare for a oral, which would be the discussion. And uh, it's a really helpful, I guess, the conference, it's a really helpful uh, feature to have, not only on paper, but it, for, for practice, because it, it teaches you to collaborate with people who might not have the same interests as you, but uh, are, gathered, are gathered in the same place for the same goal, basically, which was exactly what happened at the end of the day. Can I just point back to the resolutions and applaud everybody in this room about how much effort just goes into making one personal resolution? Yeah, because you have it's... to search up and dig up so many documents. You have to just, like, you know, try and get the whole country's view on one thing while you may know that there's at least seven of them. And get probably the best of the information you read in order to present your country exactly. in the best way. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Really, you really have to be... You have to be patient when researching because at the beginning the information might seem like uh, the, qu the quantity of information may seem too much, but uh, as you continue researching you find out that there is uh, more relevant t topics that you can include both in your position papers and personal resolutions, which can then lead to a 
a an easier process both during the the model and during the the entire resolution phase. Don't don't underestimate preparation. Yeah, preparation is probably the most important of all. Generally, it was it was really hard for me as someone with a really bad work ethic. I just cannot concentrate. I couldn't, you know, take all my sources and especially on the day of the resolution, I really, sorry, not resolution, the UN model, I felt um, really unprepared and um, really exposed at the same time. So let's just close in on final words, um, our experience and um, just general impressions of what we did. Bobby? Uh, it was successful. I My job as a, as a chairman was successful only thanks to my... Uh, assistants, uh, USA, Aguaya, and Russia, Kali, like they helped me a lot through this whole process. If I was all by myself, like I would have just stayed there and said nothing. Well, I gained a lot of experience. I gained information about not only France, but while reading you like understand the points and the things a lot of other countries do in order to stop global warming. And I would, I think I would recommend it and I would probably, I would do it again, in fact. Uh, for me, the UN model was a meaningful and memorable experience as it helped me realize how much goes into being a a, a delegate and having to represent an entire country. Uh, as we already mentioned, preparation is key, but it also told me that sometimes uh, you can't you can't prepare for everything in life and you have to come up with, with ideas and be ready to compromise at, at the spot. And the yeah, and being a coordinator also told me that I have to manage both my time and my skills equally or as equal as possible in order to not only maintain my level of progress but also help and enhance others progress during the preparation phase um i personally think that it was an extremely rewarding experience at the end um all of the stress all of the all of the preparation were worth it at the end and i would like to disagree with bobby the only thing the assistant chairmans did was track time and at the end of the day he did pretty much everything so um again once again thank you very much for that um i would recommend it and i would personally do it again because it, will, it was really fun for it me was yeah in the end it was really fun it was really fun it was um it was very fresh it was um something i hadn't done before which um was just um, so new and so interesting to me so yeah if anybody's hesitating to do it or not I would definitely give it a try um, thank you very much for listening to the podcast and I hope we can talk again some other time bye, bye. bye. <laughs>